Maybe Savoy isn't as popular as Milan, Florence or Papal State, but it is one of the strongest nations in Italy. First, it has extremely good ideas. Second, Savoyard mission tree is just awesome. Not only it grants you claims on whole Italy, beyond France and Naples, but also it gives you a lot of permanent modifiers. And not even weak permanent modifiers. They're actually quite good. Not to mention that Savoy unified Italy in the real life. In this video, I will show you how to play Savoy. As usual, let's start with privileges. Grand mana privileges, religious diplomats, clerical education, throne touches, and for now that should be enough. Just his land. Now as for rivals, I would recommend to be extremely careful with your rivals. Right now I would just rival Venice and that's it. You might ask why you should be extremely careful and that's because right now it's not really clear who would ally you. There are four options, very good options, and you can either mess up your alliances and not for example be able to ally friends, or if some big nation rivals you, it can ally your neighbors, your small Italian neighbors, which is really bad, so right now just ignore it. What you should do right now is you need to Royal Mary Austria from day one. I've tried, it's always possible. So now that you've Royal Married Austria, it means it will ally you, 100% chance. Now check Burgundy, France, Castile. Don't even think of Aragon, it will be your natural rival. So it seems Aragon is rivaled by France, which is very good, I would ally it either way, and I also recommend you to do it. Yes, in most cases it starts hostile, but don't be afraid, you still can ally it. Same with Burgundy, it almost always rivals you, but you can ally it. Although be careful if France rivals Austria, or if Austria rivals France, you may forget about the alliance. But I've tried, it's usually possible to ally both of them and I recommend you to do it. Now you need to spend your second diplomat to improve relations in Austria until you can ally it. Allying Austria is very important. While you recall, Burgundy no longer hates me, and we can even ally it. While it's very messy part of playing Savoy, you need to be extremely careful with allies. In this event I recommend to choose the second option, yes you will lose some legitimacy, but believe me if communication is a lot worse. Ok, here we go, one ally is secured. Austria is almost always better than Burgundy or France, just because you can remain in HRE if you like Austria, but we'll talk about it later. Sometimes Burgundy doesn't rival neither Austria nor France, then you can ally all three of them and it's the perfect scenario in my opinion. But even if it does rival one of them, just one of them, it's possible to save the alliance. If you ally Burgundy and Troll Merit, there will be a quite big chance that you will inherit it for free and get basically all of this land for free, without any payment. Align friends on the other hand will guarantee that you would be able to conquer Aragon. Well not Aragon but Sardinia. And yes, most likely it will break alliance, but you will have time to break its alliances with Italian miners. So right now I will ally Burgundy, and then we'll see, maybe I will be able to also ally friends. Maybe. For this I will improve relations even further and install some nations. If Burgundy rivals only one nation, like France here, it should be possible to ally all three of them. It's not guaranteed, but it's possible. Now we have one free diplomat, and with one free diplomat you must build a network on Saluzo. Well, I was quite unlucky here, usually it allies Provence, but still it's possible to declare on Saluzo and make Burgundy not join it. Ok, now that we are relatively safe, we can choose some rivals. Let's rival Provence and Genoa. Fabricate clay on Saluzo. Ideally it should be your first war. Also don't forget to check excommunication, sometimes Pope may excommunicate Provence and that means you can easily conquer it. Just keep in mind friends most likely will hate you for this. Ok, now what I'll do is I will improve relations with Austria to 150 just to finish this mission, strength in numbers. If you do it you will get one more diplomatic reputation and that means it would be easier to ally some nations. And you would annex your vessels faster, let's do it. Ok, 30 spy network, let's fabricate claim on Saluzo. If you can't declare on Saluzo, you can fabricate claim on Genoa, Milan or Provence. I would fabricate on Genoa right now. And about this event chain. I recommend to be really careful, if you choose the second option, most likely Genoa will become vessel of Switzerland. So I recommend to choose the first option. It will become your march, and that's also quite bad. You must revoke the march, preferably as soon as possible. Ok, let's fabricate on Genoa. It's allied to Aragon, which is quite good. We can conquer both of them at once. I will also build spy network on Provence, well just in case. Ok, here we go, by some miracle I could ally friends, I think they broke some alliance. I need to do it immediately, ally and trial marry. Yes, if you are lucky and Burgundy rivals either only France or only Austria, you can ally both of them. Ok, and also if you allied both some nation and its rival, you can 
improve relations with both of them to 120 and finish one more mission. So, now I will show you how to break alliances of AI nations. So usually Sousa allies Provence, but if it allies friends or partner, you can do this. Declare on someone, no matter who, call in your ally, like Burgundy here, they will join the war, obviously, and now that your ally is at war with you, not against you, obviously it won't join its allies. You can easily conquer whoever you want. Also, by the way, it's already 1452, it's time to start improving relations with vessels. You need to have 200 relations with each of them by 1454, 11th November. Okay, here we go, the siege of Salzo is over, but one very, very important thing, when you declare a nation this way, its alliance with their ally won't break. So after you piss out, I don't know, Geno or Milan, for example, or Provence, uh, your ally will be free and it will be able to help its friend and it will break your alliance. So be really careful. Anyway, you must conquer Sousa for your first mission, so I recommend to focus on it. Also, by the way, I would recommend to plan your truce and start improving relations with nations that will be angry, like here, for example, basically whole Italy. So we already start with plus 25 improved relations, but I would recommend to hire one more advisor if you can. Either improved relations one or the point computation one. Okay, let's pass out, no coalition. For your missions you need to annex one Milan, but well. It is possible to do it in one war, but coalition will destroy you. So what I will do is I will just isolate Milan from other nations, non-Italians, take money, war reparations, and take Milano, because it's trade center. Okay, let's annex Monferrat ASAP, the earlier the better. But before your next month for that, grant nobility integration policy. A second government reform you can take this one for more favors, it will be quite important. After you conquer Sauzo and Axe Monferrat, you will be able to finish this mission and then it will be easier to complete this one. For this we just need to impress Renaissance. Let's wait for it to spread. Don't forget to full core your new provinces. And also you should get some claims on Genoa. Oh, the problem is that Austria will protect it and that means we need to either break alliance with favors or to do the same as with the Burgundy. You might ask what now, and now, well, basically wait for good opportunities. Also, my game is about opportunities. Well, in theory, for example, I can declare on Luca, not make a general co-belligerent and break his alliances. More than possible. Also, let's delete one fort, no need for two of them. As for general, I would recommend to wait before annexing it. If you annex it, HRE members will be not happy. After you annex HRE vessel, you get this relations malus. I just want to say that our general situation is not ideal. You see, you can't call in Austria in wars inside HRE, so basically to call in Austria against Italians, we would need to wait for Shadow Kingdom. And by the way, here it is Shadow Kingdom. Well, basically around 1460s, the Emperor will need to abandon Italy. That means Italian nations will stop being in HRE. That means that it will be easier to conquer them. Less aggressive expansion and Austria will join in your wars. If you are allied to Austria, you can remain in HRE, and I would actually recommend to do so. Well, it seems most nations have left the HRE, only the allies of Austria have remained. Also, it hasn't happened yet, but you should keep an eye on its communication. If any nation is excommunicated, you won't get as much aggressive expansion. Ok, it seems it would be quite difficult to uh, break alliance peacefully. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to declare on ally of Genoa, on someone who Genoa would support, and then I would break Genoa's alliance with Austria using truce. Although it seems it's even not really necessary. For some reason we can call in Austria, uh, that will automatically break their alliance. Ok, we'll just take war reparations. Do not make our truce too long. And now that it hasn't allied Austria, we would be able to declare like this. You might ask, why didn't I break its alliance with Ergon? And I would answer because it would be very convenient to conquer Sardinia. You can not make Ergon co belligerent and then we won't have to fight its allies, like Castile. Anyway, if you declared, let's conquer Luca. Why not? Won't get out of crazy expansion. Ok, now I will embrace Renaissance and finish this mission. Prosper in Piedmont. Make Torino your capital, mostly because it will move your main trading city, and Jena is a lot better than Champagne. As first idea, you can either take classic diplomatic ideas, or if you want some fun, you can take espionage. Not only they reduce aggressive expansion, but also you would be able to vassalize Italian OPMs more easily. And yes, that's good to reduce aggressive expansion. Soon I'll explain why. Diplomatic ideas, though, may be better to improve more relations. So it's up to you. And if you're planning to become a G Emperor, definitely take diplomatic. Espionage are a lot worse. Personally, I prefer more diplomats. So it seems we can beat up Venice and I can't miss this opportunity. Let's go in partner and declare. Remember to always check your neighbors and see if you can easily declare on someone. Just want to warn you that it's quite a rare scenario. Usually, Venice is one of the strongest nations in Italy until you form Italy yourself. 
It usually has the most troops, the most money and stuff. Okay, let's peace out. Take on province, release some OPMs. So right now we won't be able to personalize those miners, but soon enough we should be able to. If I'm correct, a few more wars and we should be able to personalize them. Currently I would ally these OPMs, so they don't get much aggressive expansion from me. Okay, here it is, and let's declare on channel. Can't call any friends, but that's not a big deal. We will survive without friends. So it seems in this run Portugal got under view of Aragon. Don't ask me how, I don't know. Also after integrate Geneva you will be able to finish this mission and cut claims on Switzerland, but I would recommend to wait until you conquer Italy. For trade, conquering Italy first makes a lot more sense. If you made Aragon non belligerent you might take only Sardinia, one province in Sicily and break its alliances if it has some strong ones. If you made Aragon co belligerent you can fully conquer Sicily, in theory, if you are not afraid of aggressive expansion. After you peace out Aragon, I would recommend to not rush to let your allies occupy Genoa themselves. Why? Well, that's all you have time to improve relations with some nations. Otherwise, the coalition would be quite ugly. And yes, you need to conquer whole Liguria. What I'm currently doing is I'm just improving relations. Just improve relations and the coalition will be gone. Also, by the way, why diplomatic ideas are very cool is because of Savoyard ideas. So, we get plus 25 improved relations and ideas, and plus 25 from diplomatic ideas. The more improved relations you have, the faster the aggressive expansion will decay. As you can see, coalition is getting smaller and smaller. Basically, only German nations are left. 31st December, let's peace out. So, if I take only Liguria, no coalition will form, that's 100% sure. If I take also Corsica, coalition might form, most likely it won't, but it might. Ok, I think let's be risky and also take Corsica. Now I just need to improve relations with angry nations ASAP. Let's see who they are. I see Florence and we can try to scornfully insult Ferrara to not make Florence angry. Ok, now Florence won't join the coalition and only one, two, three nations will join. So everything is perfect. And it's time to release Sicily. That's why I said to take one Sicilian province. Together with Sicily you will be able to reconquer land and you won't get out of crazy expansion. Also, by the way, I just understood that the Emperor has changed. In such cases, obviously, I like new Emperor, like Platinate here. Otherwise, you will get some debuffs. So, after you conquer Liguria, you would be able to get this mission. Conquer Genoa. And get claims on Lombardy. Basically, you need to get 5 provinces in Lombardy, so either almost fully annex Milan, or you can declare Mencho on Venice, just be mindful of collisions. And after you get collisions as big as mine, obviously chill, don't do anything else. Well, you can declare if you're brave enough, but most likely it won't end well. I will just put my diplomats on improved relations with all three countries. And that's why I said it's good to ally Burgundy. First try. Yes, it's extremely easy to do it. Let's see, it's loyalty, obviously it's not loyal. Let's enable support loyalists, grant strong touches, and we need to develop it a little. Okay, now it's loyal. We've got tons of development for free. There are more reasons why making a Burgundy RPU is good, but I will tell about them later, first we need to integrate it. So it seems France wants to break our alliance and it's to be honest not surprising. I recommend you to prepare for this, it will most likely happen. You see France wants Burgundy land and if you inherit it, obviously it will be angry on you. So the Emperor demands the low countries if you see this event, if Platinate or Austria decided to not help you, they will declare offensive war on you, not defensive. So they won't be able to claim their allies, but you will be able to. Keep that in mind. So unless they are really that strong, you might not worry. But for now I like steel. Good substitute for friends. Yes, as you can see, Platinate doesn't stand a chance. And also France has warned us. What does it mean? Effectively it means we can't declare on its neighbors. Italy is definitely not French neighbor, don't worry about it, but still. Uh, that means we won't be able to declare on Aragon. Quite unpleasant. As far as the GPUT, obviously they justified wars. And in theory, by the way, we can leave the HR now. There is only Ferrara left and the Emperor is quite weak, it's not Austria. That means that even if we declare on HR nations, there won't be a lot of problems. But of course be aware that if Austria is still the Emperor or maybe Bohemia or some strong nation and you want to conquer some HR nations, maybe in Italy, maybe Switzerland, of course it would be a bad idea to leave it. It even might be easy to become the Emperor of HRE. I have done nothing and people already vote for me. If you took Diplomatic as first city group, as second city group you might want Humanist to stack improved relations modifier. If you took Espionage you might want to take Offensive for even more siege ability to siege force extremely fast. Aside from this, if you want to play tall you can take Infrastructure, obviously you can take Offensive or Quantity, and if you want to blow up Administrative may be good, well I will take Humanist. As third reform I recommend to take Representatives of the Crown for one more Diplomatic relations. 
So now what I'll do is I will get the Magic Potation Advisor and I can visualize Talion OPM. You might ask why that's cool, that's because this OPM is free. No aggressive expansion, no manpower required. Yes, of course it took some time, but believe me, it would be a lot easier to visualize nations after you finish this mission. As you can see, you will get a plus 30 visualization acceptance for 30 years. Basically, you will be able to visualize a lot of OPMs. Well, I think enough time has passed, let's declare on Milan. Shouldn't be any big collision. So we can piss out Milan, wasn't difficult at all. And yes, that was enough of waiting, no collision, and I would release two nations, two OPMs. And we will be able to visualize them for free. We recall this Lombardy, and we can visualize these OPMs. We have enough automatic slots, just don't forget to annex them once in a while. Here we go, one more vessel, and Parma doesn't want to agree, but it will, believe me. Just a little bit more trust. Okay, here we go, Parma accepts socialization. Let's do it. Basically, four Italian provinces for free. And not the worst provinces even, not the worst provinces. Also, I'm planning to declare Aragon soon, quite soon, the Iberian Wedding may fire. Iberian Wedding is basically the worst case scenario, just because we won't be able to conquer Sicily. Well, we would, but it would be a lot more difficult. So, it seems Papal State can't excommunicate Florence for some reason. I don't know why, but it can't. I wanted to show you something, but it seems it's impossible. Uh, so, actually, usually Florence and Provence are getting excommunicated, because Pope hates them. If Pope hates you, he excommunicates you. And one of the benefits of excommunication is, of course, that you get less aggressive expansion. But it's better not to conquer excommunicated nation, but to vassalize it. You will get a lot less aggressive expansion. So if you see that Florence is excommunicated, vassalize it. Basically, you will get it for free. I will just break Venetian alliances, especially with trends. And let's take some money from Bohemia. Once again, no coalition. And I will take the provinces and release Pisa. For automatic vassalization. And we will get one more necessary province to form Italy. Yes, Milan, Genoa, Firenze and Rome are necessary to form Italy, not only for your missions. So basically now you only need to declare on Papal State and we can form Italy. Well, and get the panic attack obviously. Also Papal State declared as our rival, what does it mean? It means we need to buy indulgence. If you buy indulgence, you can't be excommunicated. Okay, I'll be honest, I haven't done anything. I don't have a clue why did they elect me. Well, it was just luck, mostly luck. Well, being emperor is of course cool, the problem is it's quite difficult to leave. But yes, it does give you a lot of diplomats, a lot of manpower, more income. By the way, about income. Obviously, build some marketplaces, some workshops, and upgrade your centers of trade. Also, by the way, we can ally Poland, which would be quite a good idea. Poland is a very good ally against France. And here we go, event which will let you inherit Burgundy for free. Keep in mind, it can happen while at war, and it can happen only for the first 50 years since you build Burgundy. After this, it won't happen. Well, the problem with Burgundy is that, of course, you will get a lot of money, a lot of trade power, and a lot of manpower. But for this, you would need a lot of current capacity. Just look, I'm the Emperor, which means I have a lot of it, and still I'm almost at my limit. Okay, let's collect in English Channel, would be a lot more profitable. It seems France won't support Aragon, that means I need to gather my allies. So let's use some favors with Austria, as to prepare for war. Maybe let's reduce opinion of Aragon. And yes, we can go in Austria. Just perfect. Austria right now is the best time to conquer Ferrara. Just because Austria won't join in. Keep an eye on your neighbors. Okay, let's conquer Ferrara. Basically two free promises. Aragon is a lot more interesting. So, from Aragon we need to break its PU on Naples. Sometimes Spain or Aragon PU's Naples, sometimes they don't. But preferably if they stole Naples and it's big, it's better to break their hold on it. So you can PU it. If Naples is independent, this mission will allow you to PU it. If it's not independent, then it will just give you claims, which is boring. Although in this particular case, it might be better to not PU it, but vassalize it. Because it's small, won't generate much aggressive expansion anyway, and as vassal, it would be easier to annex it. But it depends on your game, actually. If it's big, if it still has most of its provinces, just PU it. Okay, let's annex our vessels and vassalize Pisa. Okay, after you take Sicily and Malta, you would be able to finish this mission. In my case, it will give some claims on Papal State. If Naples is independent, if they will give you a PU on it. Okay, and it seems in this campaign, the Papal State is the in-game boss. It's the biggest nation in Italy. Usually it's Venice. And Papal State just has a lot of allies, either Austria or France. And by the way, yes, it's possible to vassalize Provence and use its missions to get course on Naples. But believe me, it's not necessary. Even if you can't steal Naples as vessel, you can get PU on it. And now I'll show you the hidden benefit of annexing Burgundy. You can move your capital to Den Haag, not only it will prevent touch revolt, but it also will simplify this mission. And not only simplify, 
make it better. So we need to develop the hack uh, to 30. Here it is, 30. And build some buildings here. It has 4, we need to build one more. We need to have 5 buildings here. Maybe let's even take on loan. Why wait? Okay, I think let's also conquer Mancho. Just because my borders are currently ugly. And as fourth reform, I reckon take this one. You can never have too many diplomats. And here it is, Glory to Den Hag. Yes, it changes its name and bonuses to your new capital. So you see, the Hag is actually also an estuary. And that means that in theory it's possible to make the province almost as good as London. As you can see it creates a center of trade. Plus it will be a lot easier to develop Dutch provinces to 100 than these Italian mountain provinces. It would be at least a lot cheaper. Ok, let's start Mancho. Now our borders are pretty. Also don't forget to delete some forts, most of them are useless. And they take a lot of money. So I cannot select Utrecht and I will do it, but the only reason is that it's in my uh, capital area in Holland and I don't want to go to war just for one province. Especially in Holland. Aggressive expansion will be not worth it. Well, it's not related to Guide, but Poland joined HRE. Poland. Well, it can happen, but to be honest it's my first time seeing this. And by the way, Castile still doesn't have Isabella for some reason. So the April invasion can't happen. I don't know why, but it's fact. They only have 15 years left. Okay, success. We can visualize Bologna. Even though we have a lot of aggressive expansion, game gives you a lot of options to improve relations. Now we can finish this mission, which will give you plus 30 visualization acceptance for 30 years. Basically, you can visualize whatever OPM you want. Maybe even to Prince Minor. Just look at how many nations we can visualize. And if I've taken with Spanish ideas, I would be able to visualize even more. So you see, the games in Italy are always about diplomacy, about diplomatic maneuvers. So Pope is allied to both France and Trent. If Pope allied Austria or Castile, I would just break their alliance with favors. But with France it would be more difficult. And fighting France is not a good idea. So what I'll do is I will declare on Trent, not make Pope go belligerent, so it doesn't go in France, and I will just break its alliances. Okay, let's just break Papal alliance with France, and that's it. We don't need to want truce, and Papal state won't have time to ally friends once again. Next time it should be easy to conquer. Here we go, 10th administrative technology, that means we can form both Sardinia Piedmont and Italy. I would recommend to first form Sardinia Piedmont and finish its missions. Ok, here we go, take new ideas, Sardinian ideas are very cool. If you want to plop you can take administrative ideas. Aside from this you can take either influence or espionage for accuracy expansion management or maybe trade. As for military, offensive ideas might be good. I will take trade ideas. I need one more diplomat to collect in Venice. Aside from beautiful color and very good ideas, nothing else changes, you have still the same mission tree. Which might be good actually. You need to finish it completely before forming Italy. Well, not like need, but it would be a very good idea. Don't forget to move your capital to Ten Hag once again, otherwise Dutch Revolt will fire. Ok, here we go, truce has ended, Pope doesn't have strong allies. It could ally Austria or Castile, but once again we could break their alliance with favors. If you have Naples as your PU or Vessel declare with Reconquest, by the way, unique event for sack of Rome. We will get 1000 ducats. Ok, we can peace out. What I'll do is I will take Rome and return provinces to Naples. But to be honest, it's not really good peace deal right now. We don't really need to farm Italy right now, so it would be better to not take Rome, but take some other papal provinces. Or maybe release some OPMs and diplomatically vassalize them, if there is too much of aggressive expansion. Take Rome only when you are ready to farm Italy. Because if you are not Italy, you get very big debuff for holding Rome. Or maybe you can convert to Protestant or any other religion. But aside from this, it's better to leave Rome for later. I will diplomatically vassalize Dutch miners, just to not let mathematic vassalization go to waste. Basically, you can vassalize almost everyone, just give money, influence nation, transfer trade power, improve relations, proclaim guarantee, and in most cases, that should be enough. Ok, here we go, I can form Italy, but like I said, it's a bad idea right now. Also, for some reason, I didn't get occupation of Rome. If you are not Italy, Roman Empire or Papal State, most likely you will get it. Well, anyway, before forming Italy, at least finish this mission. Powerhouse of the North. So, in theory, it should have been difficult because, well, Piedmont is a mountainous area, so it's very difficult to develop, but because we moved our capital to Den Haag, it's actually quite easy. Just build manufacturers, develop your provinces, they're extremely cheap to develop, and you will get plus 5 permanent core cost reduction. Believe me, it's very powerful. Anyway, now let's talk about these missions. If you haven't conquered Provence, if it wasn't excommunicated, you would need to do it to finish your missions. Just clone all of your allies and you should be able to win against France. Usually it's not that strong. Also to finish your missions you would need to conquer South France. To do this you might want to release Toulouse, it's a very good vessel for this, and reconquer obviously. Also you would need to conquer Burgundy, or this French Burgundy, 
Switzerland. By the way, because of this, you might want to remain in the HRE. And you must conquer Paris to get PU. After this, basically free PU on France. Just complete the powerhouse of the north, and if you want to, you may complete these missions, and only then form Italy. Other missions are not really that strong, although you may also finish them, they are quite good. Anyway, let's form Italy, take new ideas, Italian ideas are one of the best in the game, and yes, you do remain emperor, if you became emperor, of course. To stop being emperor, just convert to protestant, or insult electors, that should be enough. Anyway, now you should be one of the richest nations, if not the richest. If you're emperor, you have tons of manpower and force limits, so you can do whatever you want. Basically, just plop and form Roman Empire. What can I say? No one can stop you. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. Hope you liked it. If you liked it, like it and subscribe to my channel. Have a great day.